Hey everyone, my name is Cole and welcome to the Chem 345 Lab Series. Today we're going to be covering lab safety and general lab conduct as it pertains to behavior in lab and chemical handling. So now we're going to talk about lab attire. Spillage is always a concern, especially when you're walking around a room with busy students handling other chemicals. So whenever you walk into lab, you're going to be expected to wear a very specific dress code of long pants and closed-toed shoes. Shorts and sandals are definitely not allowed in lab because if any chemicals spill in those areas, you might be severely affected. You're going to be expected during lab, whenever chemicals are being handled, to wear personal protective equipment or PPE as you might see it labeled. A lab coat, goggles, and gloves are always required whenever you're handling any acids, bases, organic solvents, or really just any chemicals in general. You'll be given one warning if you aren't following any of these rules. The second time anyone has to tell you, you'll be excused from lab and you'll re receive a zero for the day. One of the main focuses of the talk is chemical handling. Chemical handling is important in two ways, in order to prevent contamination and to just generally be safe. Throughout lab, you'll be exposed to various types of chemicals such as strong acids, strong bases, organic solvents, or even cancer-causing chemicals or carcinogens. Proper chemical handling should follow a few general guidelines. Always keep bulk reagents at the reagent bench or in the fume mode. Do not bring large volumes or masses back to your bench. Always wear gloves when handling any unknown or hazardous chemicals. Be aware of your surroundings at all times, especially when walking around the lab. Never ingest or inhale any chemicals, hazardous or not. And finally, pay attention to chemical labels. These indicate the chemical name as well as the concentration, which can significantly change the hazard of the chemical. For example, sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. It's extremely caustic, and in low concentrations, you might not even notice that you've spilt it on your skin. For a couple of minutes, it might start to itch after a little while. Versus 12 molar sodium hydroxide will cause instantaneous damage and may begin to burn very quickly. Next, we're going to talk about waste management. Waste management is really important when you're working with a lot of different types of chemicals. You don't want to just start mixing things together because you might end up creating a chemical reaction that could be explosive, push off a really dangerous gas, etc. You want to make sure that you follow a couple of different rules. The very, very first rule is do not ever put waste down the drain unless you've otherwise been specified in your lab notebook or by your TA. Waste in the organic labs is separated into four separate categories. The first is solid waste next is organic waste, and then aqueous waste, and then glass disposable glass waste. Examples of solid waste are loose powders, heavily contaminated materials, and used plastic pipette tips. Please discard of these in the white solid waste buckets located in the fume hoods. Aqueous waste cannot contain any organic chemicals. It can only contain acidic solutions such as sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid, neutral solutions such as salt solutions, and basic solutions, such as sodium hydroxide. Discard of these in the clear aqueous waste containers located in the fume hood. Organic waste, on the other hand, cannot contain any aqueous chemicals. Some examples that you'll be working with throughout the semester are dichloromethane, methanol, acetone, ethyl acetate, and hexanes. Please discard of these in the clear organic waste containers also located in the fume hood. Glass waste is pretty self-explanatory. This includes broken glass and disposable glass like pasteur pipettes or test tubes. Please discard of these in the blue and white broken glass boxes located at the top of your benches or in the corners of the rooms. In general, if you do not know where something goes, please ask your TA before discarding it. One of the things we expect from students is to clean up after themselves in lab. This is expected of all sections, so if you ever come into lab and you notice that something is particularly dirty, let your TA know. At the end of lab, you should be cleaning all of your glassware that's exposed to organics or that's exposed to any other chemicals, just regular aqueous waste. If it is exposed to organics, first clean it with acetone and then discard that acetone into organic waste. Then clean the glassware with 1% Alkanox, aka glass cleaner, and then rinse it with DI water and then set it out to dry. All other glassware is just simply a 1% Alkanox rinse and then DI water. Next, we're going to talk about emergency situations. No matter how much we pay attention to safety, accidents can still happen. If something does happen, you may need to act very quickly or on your own. The very first thing you should do, if possible, is alert your TA. If that means yelling, then please do so. Next, you should ask your surrounding lab mates for help, if they're around. 
and if not, you may need to navigate the room when blinded or in severe pain. This being the case, you need to know exactly where the safety showers are, how to use it, and exactly where the eye wash stations are and how to use those as well. If you are subject to large spills, you may need to act very, very quickly by getting to the safety shower. The very first thing that you should do is begin showering for 15 minutes. You should start removing all of the affected clothing, and please do not let modesty slow you down here. A TA will come around to cover you with a lab coat in the event that you do have to remove any excessive clothing, but damage can happen very, very quickly with large spills or really dangerous chemicals. If you are visually impaired or blinded by chemicals during a spill, then you need to get to an eye wash immediately. You need to find one yourself or be escorted to one by a TA or by one of your lab mates. Begin flushing your eyes for 15 minutes at least, well beyond the point when the chemical might stop burning. Damage can happen for a very extended period of time and you need to make sure that you remove all of the chemicals from your eyes. Next comes a tour of the facilities. You're going to be going into the room that you're going to be working in for the rest of the semester, and you're going to answer a few questions regarding the video that you just watched, as well as draw a diagram and label it with items that you need to find around the room. You need to be familiar with various items, such as the exits, the fire extinguishers, the eye washes, the fume hoods, and other unmentioned items like the safety showers. You're going to draw a diagram a lot like this, and you're going to label where each of these items are, and then make a mental note of where all of these things are and keep that in mind throughout the semester. Overall, lab safety requires everyone being on the same page and understanding the chemical hazards of the lab, as well as maintaining self-awareness while they're walking around the lab. Follow all of these rules, and you're going to enjoy a nice, safe semester. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.